You're live. Yes. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Okay. Today's your birthday. Yes. Happy birthday. Thank you. I'm, I'm older. You are older, older as now. we all are. Decomposing before your very eyes. Yep. Uh, so be, in honor of your birthday, the topic for the live was Isabelle Huppert because she's one of your favorites. Oh, yes. So Gorney is your favorite. Well, yes, but Isabel, I mean, they're about, they're about equal now. Well, you have a tattoo of Isabel on your body, but not Sigourney. That's true. It's almost like Sigourney is the Christ figure, and I can't uh, be sacrilegious. Oh, well, that's a good answer. Mm -hmm. So you chose five films. Um, I put the titles in French, and now I can't read them. Violette Nozier. Yep. Lulu. Uh-huh. Une Affaire de Femme. Mm -hmm. La, Separa La Separation. Uh-huh. And Ma Mère. And those were, I picked those. Those are all things I haven't watched in a long time. And for sure, you haven't seen. I haven't seen any of them. Yeah. I was hoping my mayor would win. That's what I voted for. Uh, Can I show the poster? Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to turn. But there is a big poster of my mayor. Like. <laughs> that I've had since 2004. Yeah. Yeah. And I've never seen it. In NC-17 based on an unfinished novella by uh, porn pornographer Georges Bataille, who wrote Story of the Eye. Uh, it's crazy. But Une Affaire de Femme, Story of Women, won. And I'm glad it did, because I thought this movie was excellent. Yes, uh, it's her second of seven unions with Claude Chabrol, who's known as the French Hitchcock and also one of the uh, cornerstones of the French New Wave. I, th I think he actually predates uh, Godard and Truffaut uh, with... Uh, a couple films during the, the, the new wave. And uh, yeah, this is, a, you have seen another Chabrol Huppert production because one birthday I made you watch La Ceremony, which is probably my favorite union of theirs together where she's the murderous lesbian. The post, -awful worker, yeah. the post office worker. I do. I did like that movie. Yes. Uh -huh. And I, so I, I've uh, not seen this in years and years and years, but uh, this was fun to uh, visit with again. Uh, I think it kind of, at the a decade before she had won, Best Actress at Cannes for Violette, in which her first union was Chabrol, in which she plays uh, a young woman that kills her parents. Uh, and she uh, already by 1988 had been nominated for five Caesars. And for this role, she won Best Actress at Venice. Her, the other time she won that was for La Ceremony. Uh, so this was a, a big uh, film for her in the late 80s. The premise of this movie, a housewife in Nazi-occupied France struggles to make ends meet when her husband returns home after being wounded in the war. I think this is an excellent uh, description of the movie because it's so it ends up being so different from what the story is. Like, this seems pretty, like, innocuous, but what actually ends up happening is pretty extreme, and it's based on an actual person. Yeah, Marie-Louise Giraud if I'm saying her name right. But yeah. So Isabel plays this housewife, 1940s France. In the backdrop is World War II. Nazi occupied. Yeah. Nazi occupied France. Her husband went off to war. She's hoping or presuming he's not coming back. So she's at home with her two small children. One of whom is her real life daughter, Lolita Chama. Yeah, the little daughter who she we often see her carrying is her actual daughter in real life, which I thought was cool. But... Her husband does end up popping back <laughs> into the picture and she seems disappointed. But a few things happen. First, one day Isabel is like at home and she goes into her neighbor's place who seems like she's friendly with her. And she sees her neighbor taking a bath in this like old muddy ass water. And she's like, girl, why is that water so like muddy yellow. and yellow? And the lady's like, oh, there's mustard in it because I'm trying to terminate my pregnancy. And Isabel's like, that's not how you do it. She just deadpan. She's like, yeah, you can't do it that way. Yeah. No, but, but 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 I can help you. Notably, that woman is Marie Bunel. You've seen kind of as an older woman in a lot of stuff. Oh. Recently in um, Smoking Causes Coughing. So Isabel's like, get me a couple things and I will perform an abortion on you, which is basically like this long, like enema looking thing and a bar of soap which I never quite understood if it was a special kind of soap. I don't think so. Because they mention it three times. 
But then because they keep because they say they need it, I'm like, well, what do y'all wash y'all asses with? Like, why can't you just use that soap? But Isabel performs this abortion on this lady, doesn't know what she's doing, and it actually ends up working. So that's good for them. Then one day, while Isabel's out and about, she meets a prostitute played by uh, Marie Trintignant, who I thought was beautiful. Oh yeah, well we can revisit her after, but she's got a tragic story. And Isabel and the prostitute become fast friends. And Isabel's like, "Well, like in your line of work, I'm sure you or you know people who might need my services." So then Isabel starts like an abortion company. <laughs> yeah. Like she's just performing these abortions in her apartment, doesn't know what she's doing. She's just flooding these women's birth canals with soapy water, like tepidly temperature soapy water, but it's working. Um, then to expand on her uh, empire, she decides to start renting out her, because she ends, now that she's making money, she ends up getting a bigger apartment with her husband and the two kids. And she starts renting rooms in the apartment to prostitutes so they can bring their clientele there. So now she's really living large. Mm -hmm. Like she has money for good food. She can afford to buy other things. She wears like, clearly she's upgraded her fashions. <laughs> she buys this like, like fur bolero jacket i think is funny does her hair all the time is uh, is nice and made up she looks really cute she starts having an affair with this man who's colluding with the nazis which is even more effed up because throughout the film we see isabel trying to find her friend rachel who was taken by the nazis and rachel is jewish but an important character uh piece to isabel is that she's kind of dumb like her character is like an ignorant late uneducated lady yeah she she is very ignorant so she keeps saying like has anyone seen rachel when is she coming back someone has to tell her like girl when they take the jewish people they don't come back somebody had to tell her that she's jewish she's like she never told me and the guy looks at her and goes well her name's rachel <laughs> it's like so you're so worried about your jewish friend who was taken but you're also having a, 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 a extramarital affair with someone helping the Nazis. And when she's confronted by her husband at one point, she's like, oh, I'm for the resistance. It's like, well, not like, really. okay. Notably, the man that's playing her lover uh, is Nils Tavernier, who's the son of Bertrand Tavernier, who directed Isabel several times, including an excellent uh, coup de torchon. And then uh, Nils' mother, Colo, uh, wrote, co wrote the screenplay. I thought the lover was very handsome. He reminded me like he could be a Skarsgård brother. Sure. And I actually thought Isabel's husband was very attractive too. Oh, that's Francois Clouzet, uh, who I always thought was kind of like a French Dustin Hoffman, though much better looking than that. Uh, he also had a kid with Marie Trintignant at one point. Oh, mm -hmm. but everything comes to a head because Isabel won't have sex with her husband. He's constantly asking and she's like, ew, gross, never. And to the point where, because now Isabel's business is booming, she has an assistant. And she tells her assistant, could you have sex with my husband? Like, I'll pay you extra. And when the husband finds out, he gets really upset. And we saw previously in the film, the husband was doing decoupage, like where you glue like things onto paper. He makes this decoupage letter, which reminded me of the movie The Bodyguard, the letter, the letters Rachel Marin is getting. Or Serial Mom. Or Serial Mom. That husband writes a letter to the chief of police talking about this bitch over at 123 Main Street is, has performed 12 abortions and she's also housing prostitutes so they can do their business. Thought you should know, ta-ta, XOXO. And the next scene, our investigators coming to scoop her up. And that's the poster art of the movie is her turning to be greeted by them. Oh, I didn't even realize that, but it's the perfect shot. Yeah. Because she is, we need to talk about it, but yes, because she is so clueless, like this is not the time or place to be doing this kind of business. And she is so, she's not trying to be secret about it. Anyway, they take her ass to Paris to go to like the, like the high court, I guess like the Supreme court. And they sentence this lady to death by beheading. So the final scene is they drag her ass to the guillotine. Dunzo. Yep. That's it. This, I, I, I don't know what I thought the story was. I knew that she ends up getting killed, but 
I, I'm not, I, I thought Isabel was going to be a prostitute, I think. I did not expect her to be performing abortions uh, in her apartment, and she doesn't know what she's doing. Isabel has played prostitutes. Uh, let's, uh, don't, don't get her wrong. I it's thought this movie me. was excellent. Yeah, I love it. Uh, yeah. and, and it was a nice opportunity to revisit it, because it's a very unhappy, uh, depressing movie, but also not what you'd expect uh, considering it's about uh, a female abortionist who's really not for the rights or comfort of women at all. No, because uh, if I think, because I was thinking of Call Jane with Sigourney Weaver sure. and about the Janes, who are a real group of women who are trying, like, taking women's reproductive health into their own hands. So they had this network of women who were learning how to perform abortions as non-healthcare professionals to the best of their ability with the intention of helping women. But Isabel's character, she just wants money. Yep. She does not care. Well, I think uh, Lulu says to her at one point, like once you start having, getting it, you just want more. And at a point, one of her customers dies as a result of the procedure and- Had six kids already. She already had six kids. So she's like, I can't have any more. And then we, and the reason we know this about her death is the lady's sister shows up at Isabel's house with two of the lady's kids. And she's like, I thought you should know that this little shit you're doing here caused my sister to die. Jasmine died and her husband threw himself under the train. And the husband was so distraught, he killed himself. And Isabel's like, well, I know what I'm doing. This has never happened before. I told her if something was wrong, she should come back. And the sister hands her money, like, well, this covered the debt she owed you. And Isabel just takes the money like, yeah, we're good. That was pretty cold-blooded. It's pretty cold. Also, this woman's like, well, there's a Christian woman who's like, I guess I'm going to have to raise all six of these damn kids by myself. And by the way, I'm better than you. Uh, the woman that dies do is Dominique Blanc, who just uh, had a really good role in Origin of Evil with Lore Calamy. Uh, but I liked her monologue because she explains to Marie, uh, Isabel's character, why she just she can't have another baby. And she, she's like, I don't like it. My kids, I didn't even like the first one. I mean, it's pretty powerful. Oh and it brings, Isabel's crying in that scene. But So let me just go through these notes. The film opens with a dedication. It says the film's dedicated to all those who appear in it. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really classy. Yeah. Like, I, I, I think this might be the first film I've ever seen with that sort of dedication. Well, if you think of it, too, this is this is the late 80s, and it's a film about abortion. And as the title suggests, it's more than just about this one woman. Uh, it's about women's experiences, albeit in a certain time and place. But there was controversy when this film went Oh, released. I'm sure. Uh, and there was a terrorist Christian fundamentalist group I had read about that had thrown kind of tear gas or something into some theater showing and somebody died of a heart attack. Oh, geez. So yeah, there was, I mean, not everybody was happy to see this film, but. So we know Isabel's character ain't shit from the beginning because she is with, this is before her husband gets home and she's telling her son, who's the older kid, he's probably like six. She tells him, I'm going out. I'm still young and need to have fun. <laughs> she just tells the little boy that and then leaves. And the dad's not back yet. No, that's what I meant. Um, but when the dad returns, no one is happy to see him. Not the kids, not Isabel. So the movie doesn't give a lot of backstory on any of the characters. We just have to presume like the backdrop of World War II, Nazi occupied France, they're barely making ends meet. It's clear that life is hard and that maybe we do get a sense. I think the weakest part is of the story is that we don't really understand Isabel and her husband's relationship at all. When he gets back, she's washing his clothes and she's washing his underwear and she's crying. And it's just like, what is she going through? And then she go, and basically she shames him. Well, he's trying, he's still trying to put the moves on her in that scene. Yeah. And she's like, don't touch me. Like you're so dirty. And then she's crying and she's washing his underwear. And she's basically like, I have to clean your fucking doo-doo marks off your, oh, I just said the F word, sorry. I have to clean skid marks off your underwear. Like, this is disgusting. Why would I even want to have sex with you? Like, you're a dirty adult man. So that's the most we understand about. I think we get to know a lot. As soon as he comes back and she's like, oh, you're back. And then he goes, I have a letter I want to read to you. That's right. Then he, which I actually thought was a really, because they both seem like simple people. I thought that was 
for his ability and maybe not being able to articulate his feelings well. I thought that was a really smart way for him to explain to his wife that he's disappointed that while he was gone to war, she never reached out to him to say she missed him, that she missed their sex life. So he reads a letter of a fellow soldier who died, that a letter that soldier received um, from his wife. And that soldier had given it to him because he said, I know that your wife doesn't send you anything. I thought that was pretty sad. It's, it's, it's funny watching them try to communicate in this horrible, miserable situation where they really don't, they can't really escape each other. But when he try, he tries to put her hand on his penis and she goes, I don't like that. And he goes, well, what do you like? But I don't feel like a woman like her would even be able to quite articulate that. And I do get the sense of she has such reverence for Rachel, the Jewish woman who is uh, taken by the Nazis that I almost, I kept wondering, I, did, was she attracted to her? Because also how she feels about Lulu is kind of, yeah, that's interesting. What? Well, but then she also has this sort of affair with the, the 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 guy. But yeah, it was. I also got the sense that it wasn't like like what you said. She maybe couldn't articulate how she felt, but I also just kind of felt like it, it seemed like they had spent a long time not connecting. Mm -hmm. Then you get to yeah. a point where it's like I don't even. Also, I was a little confused why now that she's making money, why didn't she just kick his ass to the curb then? Because she still supports him. Well, she I, even gets him a job to think, keep him out of the house. I think she feels something for him, but but it probably uh, ruffles less feathers to still keep him around. And plus, he's daycare. Uh, That's true, but she also is not that sweet to her kids either. Like she seems very self centered. Yes, she's very detached from all that because that's not really the life she wanted. But her her lover is interesting too because she kind of pilfered him away from Lulu because he was Lulu's client. That's right. So I'm like, there's some weird tensions there uh, in competition maybe going on too. I didn't, I thought the little boy, his acting was a little crunchy. It was a kid, child acting. Uh, oh, getting back to that letter. When the husband asks Isabel, like, why did you never send me a letter? <laughs> she goes, you know, I can't spell. <laughs> <laughs> but then he goes, well, this lady couldn't Well, this either. lady couldn't spell either. Like, look at her shit. Like, <laughs> um, Oh, she's charging 1,000 francs to do the abortions. So I was trying to do my conversion, which I think I calculated was like in 1940 was like 45. Because, you know, we no longer have francs. Uh, in 1940, that would have been 45 US dollars. So 45 US dollars in today's dollars is almost a thousand dollars. So it's almost a direct, uh, well, not direct, but yeah, a thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Although by today's standards, a medical procedure for a thousand dollars is not a lot of money. Well, when you're desperate to have something you need done, that's been uh, made a little. That's true. So when the husband starts to realize something's going on, like my wife is doing something on the side because all of a sudden we have jelly. Yeah. Because <laughs> he complains like, God, the food here is worse than when I was on the battlefield. And she's like, well, because we don't have any money. And then all of a sudden they have good food. She's dressing better. So he's trying to figure out what happens. And he takes his son to a bar. This little six-year-old boy, the dad takes his son to the bar and gets him drunk, like gives him liquor, and then asks him, like, what does your mom do when I'm gone? Yeah, who are her <laughs> friends that come over? Because the dad is assuming it's men. But the little boy's like, oh, she has friends come over. Oh, men, right? And he's like, no, they're all ladies. And that's when the husband's confused, like, why are all these ladies coming to my house? But then at a point, it's clear that Isabel explained to him, like, this is what's happening. I'm doing abortions in the kitchen and there are hoes in the guest room having sex, like deal with it. And that's her energy. Yeah. She's like, it is, like, I don't, it's your fault for coming home early. You yeah. shouldn't be here at this hour. I kind of admired how like, she's like, I'm going to do what I need to do. I mean, the audacity is pretty impressive. The audacity is very impressive. But she's in her own little fantasy world. She just wants, like now that she has obtained some wealth, she wants what she wants, which is to be a singer. I want to be a singer. We need too. to talk about that. <laughs> Isabel meets her little Nazi boyfriend because the Nazis are having some sort of rally, like in the streets. 
And they're playing a game like some kind of anti-Semitic game. It's yeah. it, it, it's almost like uh, hitting the pinata, except they have a oh trigger warning about animal abuse. They have a goose hanging, like an and insurance. they blindfold people. It's like or like pin the tail on the donkey, and they give people like a big samurai sword. What's that uh, film? The Japanese director who someone said I need to do a. Uh, Kurosawa. Kurosawa. Akira Kurosawa. I just thought of that because they give him a big sword and they have to cut the head off of the goose. And one guy does it. Like we see, I, and I think it was a real goose that was beheaded. It's her and, little boyfriend. And you see the goose's head get cut off. And then it turns out to be the guy she ends up having an affair with. And he gives her the goose. And she cooks that goose and feeds it to her family. So it was not, <laughs> no, it wasn't wasted. The goose was not wasted. Oh, I thought a really good line is now that Isabel, th there is a point when her character starts questioning like her activities as far as performing abortions. And she asks her hooker friend, do you think the babies inside the mother have a soul? And that lady tells her their mothers would have to have a soul first. That took me out. <laughs> that was deep. Line. That was real deep. <laughs> no matter how you feel about the issue, I thought that was deep. Yeah. Um, Okay, so Isabel's character in this movie really wants to sing, and she, there's a she. We hear her singing like five times in the movie. She even says twice she wants to be a singer. And I was thinking, is Isabel Luper like Marlena Dietrich? Like she's writing songs to her contract to sing. What is she doing? She does sing in an awful lot of because she's not a beautiful singer. <laughs> it's okay, uh, but she, you know, she almost played Dietrich. For Louis Mall in the early oh, 90s. Oh, but she did. But it, the project didn't come together. I could see her she could back play. then. Yeah. Well, you know, Marlena older, too. She could do that. Well, she'd have to be de-aged. <laughs> well, Marlena's or not like, old. Marlena toured as an old woman. No, but I think Marlena infamously looked horrible when she was an old lady. Not and Isabel... Horrible. But... I, I thought she did. Like, she refused to be, like, rec like pictures of her. She would wear veils. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, what I'm trying to say is Isabel looks much better sure. at that age than. Uh, what somebody described Marlena as an older woman, she, she would go, she would perform concerts and sing. Said she looked like an aristocratic crow. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that's the reference I'm thinking of. Uh -huh. um, oh, so there's so much symbolism in this movie. There's a point when Isabel is with her prostitute friends and her lover, and they're on a carousel with the kids, having a lovely day. And then we see that some uh, man gets shot. Yeah, right in front and of And I don't know if that was like the Nazi shooting like a Jewish man. And then he literally like runs out and like, like kind of like stops right in front of Isabel. But I just thought like, even at the worst of times, people can't act right. Like, nope. you know what I mean? Like she can't just like keep it together and like try to come together with her husband, protect her children and just be okay until this, like, hopefully the world gets better, you know? that That's the overall impression I got, like, watching this movie. It's just people will do, like, people can be so selfish and... And oblivious. And oblivious, like, like there's no risk assessment. What's more, because then when she finally gets hemmed up and she's sitting in prison, she's talking about how the authorities are just going to let her kids be without a mother. But then, you know, the other side of the coin is like, you didn't think when you were doing this shit that's clearly illegal that you could put your children at jeopardy of not having a mother around. So I thought that was interesting. Well, I like that her defense to the tribunal at the end is like, I just won't do it again. She's so ignorant. She really thought, you really thought that you could just tell those people, sorry. You, from their eyes, you murdered 12 babies and you assisted prostitution. You are dying, bitch. Like there is no well, they, there's no house arrest for you, girl. <laughs> they they also were making a point of her. They were at this place in time. They, oh my gosh. There's a scene where all the women are like in this holding cell and they have to poop in a bucket. Oh. Mm -hmm. Probably the biggest reason I don't want to ever go to jail or prison is like no privacy. Well, yeah. Like that's the biggest reason. I think there are other worse things, but I don't know, it seems peaceful, but <laughs> <laughs> if you're in solitary. I don't want to be in solitary. I want to be around people. But, you know, I don't want to have to, like... Often the other people aren't peaceful if they want something from you. 
they wouldn't want anything from me. Okay. <laughs> um, so poor Isabel, she's so first they're holding her in her little town. And then one day this person comes and he's like, Yeah, we're requesting you come to Paris to talk to like the Supreme Court. So sign this paper. But we know she can't read. So she's like, Well, I don't understand. Can my lawyer look at it? Your lawyer's not here anymore. Well, I don't know what I'm doing. Where's my lawyer? Like, this is the the government telling you you have to sign it. But it's clear that she signed something that she didn't know what it was, probably her admitting to what she did. So I felt bad for her. Um, and then her public defender was actually like a really nice guy who was like really trying to help her. And like he even put his own neck on the line by confronting, I guess, what would be the equivalent of the district attorney, telling him like, I believe in her. She's already spent all this time in prison. She's changed. Yeah. She's changed. Like she she really is remorseful. And that guy is like, good for her, but we need to set an example. No, he says Jesus would forgive her. And he's like, well, Jesus isn't in Paris or something. Yeah. He, I mean, he's not, I mean, he's not interested in having a heart, but he's also saying like the country of France is in shambles. Like, like we need to be strong and show that we are not playing around. So it was curtains for her. And then while she's waiting for her sentence, she has like a panic attack and everyone's telling her like, don't worry. Like they would never sentence a woman to death. And then literally the judge is like, <laughs> Oh yeah. She makes one little friend in prison. That's uh, played by the singer, Danny. Oh, that friend. I felt so what, when Isabel first shows up to prison, that friend is kind of like trying to like establish her dominance over her. But then when the friend realizes what Isabel did to get into prison, and then she realizes that Isabel's kind of dumb, every scene is her looking at her like, girl, like, <laughs> your days are numbered, bitch. I felt bad. Um, she, she tells like a, a little prayer right before she goes to get like, it, I don't know this prayer, but she says like, Hail Mary, full of shit, rotten is the fruit of your womb. Is that a real prayer? I think. I don't think the shit part real, is. I don't know. I think that's the opposite of what the real prayer is. Then I got so sad because obviously her children are alone. And then we see that the son, well, the, the young daughter, because she's been in prison for a little while. So the kids got older and the young daughter seems to have like emotional issues. The son who already seemed a little off is like, banging his head against the wall so they're gonna be and we get some narration from like the perspective of the adult son saying like my mom was executed when i was seven uh shows him being confronted at school but because the other kids are like where's your mom and he's like paris and they're like no she's in jail she's in jail and then it's like she talks about the hypocrisy of like men she's well she's being accused of murdering children by the french government but the French government is also sending Jewish kids to Germany. Like, well, what do you think they're doing with those kids once they get over there? So, you know, she's aware enough to understand, like, the hypocrisy of it all. It's just so unfortunate that, you know, she did something she shouldn't be doing. Her attorney, who really fought for her, couldn't show up to her execution. I felt bad yeah. for the attorney. Well, um, then he sends his assistant, and then, you know, it's just... And he's trying to uh, provide some sucre, right, by saying, because she's at, she's concerned if it's going to hurt. <laughs> he's like, nope. It's gonna be fine. It'll be quick, girl. Then they give her a haircut. I didn't understand that haircut. So, it was awful. <laughs> well. Like, what's the point of giving her a haircut? To, to see the neck better? Oh, oh, actually. Well, they give her a bob, so it's still, like, shoulder length. So I didn't understand, like, I would think you'd buzz the head. I don't know. But anyway, she looked crazy with that wig on. Um, and then the final, so then the final scene is her going to the guillotine and then it just cuts. And then we get text that says, have pity on the children of the condemned, which I thought was emotional because, you know, there's so many children affected by the actions of their parents who end up, you know, deserted or because the dad has issues too. So their upbringing will certainly not be better with just the dad around. They're, they're doomed, kind of. What would you give this movie? Four. 
I would give this movie four out of five. Oh, and we so Marie Trintignant, who played uh, Lulu, the the prostitute, the sex worker. Uh, she she of course starred in uh, Chabrol's Betty. There's the title role, which is a great film. Uh, but her father, of course, was Jean Louis Trintignant, who's a French superstar. Uh, Isabel would l- later play his daughter, and then one of Marie's children, Rom- Roman Kolinka, was the student that Isabel has a strong affinity for in Things to Come the Mia oh. Hansen love film. So it's, there's several family affairs that are, have inter, intersected quite strongly in this film. I was going to say the reason I'm not giving it a five is I think, you know, the acting from the little boy is not the best and we've seen good child acting. Um, I also felt like we, we need a little bit more background on the relationship between Isabel and her husband I think the main thing I noticed is I didn't like the editing. The editing felt very like abrupt. It also, it almost felt like particularly the third act. It just feels very rushed. Like maybe this could have been at least a three hour movie and they just had to cut it down. So those were my weaknesses, but I do think it's an excellent um, film. Yes. Oh, and one last thing on Marie, uh, who got into a violent fight in 2003 with her boyfriend. Oh. She, she's married to somebody else at the time, I think, too. Oh. Uh, but who was the lead singer of the band Noir Désir. And she died of, of a cerebral edema, I believe, after that fight. And he was charged and convicted with her murder. Oh, wow. Well, that's unfortunate. Yeah. I'll go through the comments. People are telling you happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you, BMCK. Um, oh, someone said Nick uh, did not decline the Chloe Sevigny birthday movie choice <laughs> to Mother Isabel. We can we can defer her. It doesn't have to be on Chloe's birthday. Oh, we, sure. We, we can honor Chloe. I don't know what Chloe... I mean, I'm not excited about it. Well, really? I'm, I don't even know her except in one movie. Oh, she's got a strong body of work. Although, you know, most of the stuff I think of her aren't supporting roles, but, um, but yeah, the, I, I, I haven't watched Boys Don't Cry since the year came out, by the way. Happy birthday, Nick. Thanks for sharing your smarts and snark with us. <laughs> George Bataille had the tea. Oh, God, I've read Story of the Eye and Mamere. I mean... Where's the poll for this? The poll is on our YouTube channel. Like, if you go to the main channel like all those tabs like community page is where the poll is um there's a shop page where people can buy merchandise like the hoodie i'm wearing uh what kind of birthday cake did you have nick he hasn't had cake today no i haven't i thought of making one i i just got back from out of town yesterday though and that just felt like a lot to make it we can go get you a cake well then we have a whole cake here to eat so Lost Ceremony was giving all kinds of class struggle. <laughs> C word. I know that's right. Oh, God. even the beginning, the opening shot where Jacqueline Bissette is meeting Sandrine Bonaire, like on the opposite side of railroad tracks, like literally the girl from the wrong side of the tracks. Yeah. May Sigourney suddenly smile to herself right now in honor of your special day. Oh, Siggy. I wasn't familiar with any of these films here for the commentary. Well, I wasn't either. All good. All worth watching. I'll probably have to do a secret film for Ma Mare because that'll be fun to talk about. I don't know why someone's mentioning La Mare, but um, I work with someone who used to be like a higher up at uh, the company that makes La Mare. And actually, she and I were talking about this on Wednesday of last week. But the the cost of goods and the ingredients in La Mare are like nothing like it is not the high quality product that people think it is it the it's the uh the profit margin on that on those products is through the roof people are literally paying for the cachet of saying i use la mer but there are better quality ingredients that like things at the drugstore that cost a tenth of the price uh and of course that spelling of mer means c like S E A, where Mare, M E R E means mother. Oh. <laughs> Isabel's kind of the queen of deadpan. Oh, yeah. That inscrutable face. Mm-hmm. Hi, Santa Cruz. <laughs> That's good for them. 
Belle de Abortions. Like Belle de Jour, Woman of the Day. <laughs> Where can I find this film? You know, it didn't occur to me to even... We should probably select movies that are easily found. I mean, I own it. It's available on DVD. I don't think it was ever released on Blu-ray. So no one can see this movie, really. I'm sure that there are places... It's Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Time to shower Nick in compliments about how cool, smart, interesting, and funny he is. Mm, story time. Thank you. Wasn't Chabrol the director of the original movie that ended up being remade by Adrian Lyne as Unfaithful? Yep. Uh, 1969's An Unfaithful Wife, starring his own wife, Stéphane Audran. Uh, yep. Yeah. And Diane Lane, of course, was nominated for the Oscar in the remake. And apparently J-Lo turned down that role that Diane took. I mean. Well, good. Happy birthday, Nick. You and my niece have the same B-Day. Mine's on Thursday. Oh, well, and happy a, early birthday. And Estelle Parsons. Oh, you share your birthday with Estelle Parsons? <laughs> I share my birthday with Sierra. Somebody else. No, somebody else. Andrea Riseboro, I think, maybe, too. Can y'all dedicate all y'all's videos to us? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I dedicate all of our videos to the people who watch them. <laughs> well, no, based on this movie, I should dedicate the video. No, based on uh, Story of Women, I should dedicate all of our videos to us because we did all the work to make them. <laughs> but, uh, but, in, but I would dedicate them to the people who watch them. Um, I saw May, December in NYC this weekend. What a movie. Yeah. Yes. Loved it. Do adults still have ice cream with their birthday cakes? You know, we went, uh, we were in Minnesota last week, right? Yes. And your mom made some stuff, and one of which was a really good cake. But she was really adamant about there being ice cream. Yes. Because I don't normally like ice cream with cake. I don't even like milk with A la mode. Yeah. I mean, it's not that I don't like it. I would love, but it's like I don't need dairy on top of a thousand calories. But Oh, I like ice cream and milk. But yeah, so I guess adults do like ice cream with cake because, yeah. I mean, I like it better than, I don't really like ice cream cake itself, but yeah, dollop. Well, ice cream cake is interesting because it has to be the right temperature. I like it when it starts to melt enough that it sort of saturates the cakey part. Sure. But then that window is like specific because I don't want the ice cream to fully melt. But I don't like, and then it's so hard to cut. And I always have a fear of cutting off a finger. So I don't I don't like to chop or cut anything because I feel like I'm going to cut my finger. Even though these candies I was chopping last night, chopping. in my mind, I was thinking I'm going to cut my finger off. Uh, happy delayed Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Nick, I wish you all the best gourmet mayonnaise. <laughs> I, I want somebody to try to give me some gourmet mayonnaise. Try it. Let, let me see what that is. I haven't had it. Well, you would use it. You'd probably make some sort of dip out of it. I, yeah, I'd complain. Because Nick likes to create his own dips. Yes. It doesn't matter what we're eating. You'll go grab like five things out of the refrigerator and grab a ramekin. And all I hear is like a fork clanking on the ramekin. Who triggered And then you're like, here, try this. Catherine Keener and get out the sauce. For some old sauce, like what? I like just flavors. Eat these, just eat these dinosaur chicken nuggets and shut up. I like flavors. <laughs> it's okay. What's your favorite? Oh, you're not asking us. Um, your diabetes thanks you from the bottom of their hearts. I love caramel and coffee. Coffee goes with most things. Oh, in my mind. <laughs> Oh, I guess I don't notice that. The amount of parents bringing their kids to bars, wineries, and breweries is ridiculous. Does yeah. that happen? I don't notice that in LA. I was at a, a different trip to Minnesota with my sister, and she had brought me... We were going to a couple bookstores, and they happened to be around a bunch of breweries. So we were probably a glance inside three breweries, and there were a lot of parents there with kids in strollers just drinking. Well, I have to say, being in LA, like... And going like downtown, like, cause yeah, I mean, the places we usually go, I don't see children. Cause I think it would be weird to have like a kid at like some restaurant 
in well, downtown LA, like at night, like well, yeah, a nighttime bar, but like daytime breweries and wine tasting people do bring kids. Oh, I guess I don't notice. Oh, they did ask us, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? Um, I don't know. Depend. I I mean, when we're at like a Rite Aid, I always get the cotton candy. If we're at Rite Aid getting Thrifty's ice cream, I really like uh, like the chocolate brownie, even though it has walnuts and I'm very allergic to walnuts. I like the strawberry cheesecake and the butter pecan. If it's Ben and Jerry's, I like half baked. Um, haagen I like pineapple coconut. You like pineapple coconut. Um, haagen like the dulce de leche, I like. Um, yeah. I like a really good, what is it? Is the Ralph's brand double vanilla? Yeah, you seem to like that. Yeah, good vanilla is good. I mean, there's a lot of tepid vanilla flavors, but if you get it, I feel like vanilla itself is an underrated base flavor. Uh, oh, I need to watch more Marlena Dietrich films. Oh, God. Yeah. Blonde Venus, I think, is my favorite. But uh, oh, gosh. The Scarlet Empress is good. I don't, I don't know. She's got a lot of good ones. Like that Kristen Wiig SNL skit where she says, don't make me sing, and everyone else says, then don't. <laughs> yeah, Isabel sings quite a bit in this movie. She sings. Not like it's a musical number, just like she'll be cleaning the house and singing. Or or in that, like in the movie Souvenir, where she plays the Euro. Oh, the Euro. That's right. My sister-in-law singing karaoke is the death of my husband. <laughs> Seems peaceful. Well, I could see myself be, being down and out. Like, I'm single, like, broke. Uh, just, like, really hard up. And then thinking that prison would be, like... Respite? Respite. So then I'm like, well, why don't I take my chances and, like, try to, like, rob some... Like, I don't want to hurt anyone, but, like, you know, rob a bank and get some money. Because then it's like, well... If I get away with it, now I have some money. Maybe I can get back on my feet. And if I don't, then I guess I can have like a safe place to live with food and <laughs> I don't know. And maybe I'll make a friend in prison. There are a lot of men in there. I, I don't want to go to prison. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. the illiter Ill illiteracy, like crime is another guiding thread for Chabrol. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, between that and less, less ceremony. Also, uh, Isabel murdering people, like in um, Merci pour le chocolat or Violet or less, less ceremony. What else? Well, in the swindle, she's a con artist. Madame Bovary's, you know, an, another unhappy housewife. Someone saw the holdovers and they enjoyed it. Yeah, I did like that. Did you get some amazing birthday gifts? I have the best gift in the world right here. I was so worried you were not going to say that. I would hate to ruin Ooh. the day. <laughs> but I believed in you enough not to make not not to lead you into it. Well, I already know that you think that. That's why you don't really buy gifts. So I don't buy gifts. Period. Well, you're buying dinner. Yes, that's true. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. Being sir. What's mine is yours, truly. Well, that's what the law says, doesn't it? Oh, this is how people <laughs> end up on Dateline. This is why husbands kill their wives, because you make comments like, if if we, if we I try to leave, you're going to take half my stuff. <laughs> you're like Loretta, Vine, uh, Loretta Devine for colored girls. <laughs> Walk away well, actually, I would be. Like, yeah, I'm like, like, you're trying to walk away with half my stuff. <sighs> uh, but technically, you have more stuff than I do. I do. Try. You want to yeah. walk away with all these movies yeah. <laughs> and books? <laughs> Good luck. If you take half my stuff, it'll fit into a lunch pail. Um. Oh gosh. Oh yeah, that, that's a good point. The goose beheading is foreshadowing for what happens to Isabel, and also kind of the how justice is blind 
Oh, uh, I see that people can stream this movie on the Criterion channel. Oh, that so this is a Criterion film? It is not, they have not released this on Criterion. Oh, but it's on the Criterion channel. The, although I just got a copy of the Criterion Blu-ray they sent me of Lost Ceremony. It's oh. about to be released. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Nazi boyfriend foreshadowing that goose beheading. Isabel was that silly goose. Yeah. Actually, oh. That's what I just said. Oh, that's what you said. And, okay, and that how, does make sense. And how justice is blind. Yes. Sorry. Per se. Oh, well, yeah. Thick hair may cause the guillotine not to work efficiently. Imagine being the first person that happened to. Oh, could you imagine? That big ass blade like <laughs> knocks you out, but you don't die. Yeah, she has pretty like she's a little white lady, so that her her hair's wispy. I bet her ponytail's like this thick. Yeah, I think it would slice um, through that. You know, I often think though, if I were sentenced to execution, or like if I could choose a way to die, I've always thought I wanted to be the guillotine. That seems like so fast and painless. I don't want lethal injection. I'm. And I definitely don't want to be electrocuted or like firing range. Ugh. Well, don't do something that necessitates uh, you were convicted of charge. <laughs> that would. What genre is this movie? Dramedy, melodrama, satire. I would call it a drama. Drama. Yeah. I mean, I'm. I don't think I'm trying to be funny, but like, this movie's quite serious. Yeah. It's just, you know, the discomfort of what's happening in, inherently makes me want to like laugh, but. Please do a live about Emerald Fennel so I can talk my shit about her status quo affirmations. Who's Emerald Fennel? The director of Promising Young Woman in Saltburn. And also she was Pregnant Barbie. But she only has two movies? Yeah. Oh, so we can't do a... Uh, <laughs> when when she finally has her fifth movie, we'll do a... A poll. <laughs> a poll. Well, we already have reviews of her too. Yeah, we reviewed both of her films. Um any fun? Oh, you go to a Beyonce concert. She points right at you and sings, she ain't no diva. What are you doing? Oh, Screaming. God. Well, no, you know what it was? Some At one of her shows, some person was saying Beyonce can't sing. Oh. Was, was holding up a sign. I'm assuming to, like, get her attention. And so she... Um, Is that the way to do it? So she walks up to the person and hands on the microphone like you sing. And the person couldn't sing. So Beyonce goes, she ain't no diva. <laughs> Uh, I would never hold up a sign like that. No. Any fun birthday plans? Just go to dinner. Oh, we're going to buy Nick a suit. Uh-huh. And then uh, we're going to go have dinner. Mm -hmm. And then I'm sure I'll request you watch something. Not choosing. Okay. Well, we'll we can do that. Are we going to review Anatomy of a Fall? Probably not. I mean, it's excellent. It already came out, right? It did. Yeah, I'm not going to make a video about it. I don't even know what it's about. So the anatomy of a fall. It's a kind of a, a woman's husband dies under mysterious circumstances that suggest that she might have pushed him because uh, they were on the rocks and then she has to defend herself. Oh, that kind of sounds interesting. It's excellent. Starring Sandra Hewler, who you, I'm sure you remember from Tony Erdman. The daughter? Mm -hmm. I remember the movie and I remember there was a daughter. That's the five out of five movie. I love that movie. Love it. Uh, yeah. If YouTube had a head chop off channel, 10 million subs. Oh yeah, that'd be popular. People are horrible. You're late, but you're here. Um, I just saw the movie Popcorn from 91. It's one of those so bad it's good films. And also happy birthday. Popcorn, yeah, we watched, we had a movie night for that with a friend. Oh, a Alec recommended it. Uh-huh, and um, cause I think he had like the 4K steel book of it or something, but uh, and the villain in it, it was so good. We're like, who is this? How come we've never seen him anything? And like a lot of films from the 80s, there's all these like gay actors who's like, oh, they died of AIDS. <laughs> Nick using Crunchy was a reverse birthday present for sure. Oh, yeah. I know Nick didn't like it, but I have to say I adored Ken Loach's The Old Oak. I definitely did not like it. I, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> it was at Cannes this year. Ken Loach is a very old school British director who's won can twice, but I, I mean, I'm not mad at I uh, Daniel Blake winning that year. Uh, but, <laughs> but old Oak, I thought was felt very old fashioned. It's not a terrible film, but it was old fashioned for sure. For, for me, we've been new. La Mer really wasn't the shit. Well, I mean, I also didn't think it was worth the money, but I was surprised to learn like 
what it actually is. Like, <laughs> it's really not worth the money. Thank you, Johanny. Enjoy your birthday, Nick. Buy yourself a fancy LA drink. Thank you. Well, I'm sure you're going to have several mini drinks this evening. You're not? You'll have at least two at dinner. I mean, if whatever I'm allowed. Yeah, because I stop you from doing things. Anybody uh -huh. got an easy sweet potatoes recipe? Oh, you know, every day for breakfast for how many years now? Year, years. Like years. Since the last time we did Whole30, I'm sure. For years and years now, we've been eating uh, roasted sweet potatoes for breakfast. And Nick puts like almonds and cashews and then bananas. But I don't know if that's the kind of sweet potatoes. Are, are you asking for a sweet potato pie recipe? <laughs> Um, Nick, I am finishing up my English literature degree next spring at Cal State LA. Any tips for someone middle-aged and going back to school? Get get ready to get a, sacrificing free time that you thought you had. I mean, it was, but that's a fun degree. <laughs> so I enjoy being forced to read things. Uh, but but yeah, I mean, you're just, and then lots of papers and deadlines and um, is it, I got my master's online and I think I missed the process of having to go to class, which is, I, don't, I, I find much more beneficial, but I, I guess just, I guess not being, feeling self-aware around all the other children that are going to be in class with you. Happy birthday, Nick. Did you ever check out that film Mami Wata from Nigerian? I did or not. Or the Nigerian film? That was released, was it last month? I have not, but I do plan to. I share my birthday with Ian Rand, Farrah Fawcett, Ina Garten, and Big Boy from Outcast. Oh, God. oh, speaking of which, I need to listen to that Andre 3000 album. Get, get them all into one room. Oh, God. Well, Ayn Rand. <laughs> favorite movie of the year so far? I'd have to look at Letterboxd. I I won't say yet because we're going to be publishing those videos soon. But I will say that I'm having trouble narrowing it down to 10 because there were actually a, a lot of films I did like this year. Did you hear about Cassie suing P. Diddy for all kinds of bad shit? Yes. Yeah. Didn't that they just settled that? And then they settled it like immediately. Yeah. Um, but, you know, people have been saying stuff about P. Diddy for a while. Like I've heard many people say things. And then the allegations of what he did are like real suspect, like him hiring male prostitutes to have sex with her and he videotapes it. And I don't know. It's not looking good, buddy. Oh, well, some, what are your top five films of the year? Well, we're going to make a list in like two months, but I feel like there are films left for the year that might make it in your top five. There are, but I've already, I'm already overstuffed. For sure. What are you looking forward to in the next two months or one month? Um, what, what's coming out before the end of the year you're looking forward to? I am looking forward to re-watching Eileen with Anne Hathaway. Oh. Uh, I'm trying to think. Anthony Hopkins is Sigmund Freud. I heard is good. Uh, I want, uh, I'm, I want, I'm excited to revisit American Fiction with Jeffrey Wright with you because I think that'll be a really fun conversation. Uh, I don't know what else is, I'm forgetting what else is coming out. Oh, the color purple. Did she insist on real ice cream or did you get an iced dairy dessert? <laughs> we got real ice cream. Well, she just kept saying she wanted it. So then when we went to the store, I just got the ice cream because we were at Whole Foods. So I just picked real ice cream. Oh, someone shares their birthday with uh, George Michael. Oh. Poor George. I've Ever since that documentary, I've had quite a bit of George Michael on my playlist. Oh, yeah. Put the, putting the knife in hot water and then cutting the ice cream cake is a good tip. Have you watched The Gift from 2000 starring Hilary Swank? That movie is wild. Keanu Reeves is a wife beater. I came across it on Prime. It was a mess, but I couldn't turn away. Yeah. I You've seen it? I, I own it, but oh. I just rewatched it with on my trip with my sister, um, with starring Kate Blanchett as a psychic. And Billy Bob Thornton wrote that script. Oh. I think it's 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 a lot of fun. I mean, Hilary Swank is 
playing straight up white trash with that mullet haircut with the bangs. Uh, but <laughs> it, and in fact, I think everybody is fine in it, even Giovanni Ribisi, but uh, Keanu doesn't, because he's supposed to be this redneck wife beater, but he doesn't come across like that. I can't picture Keanu Reeves like that. It feels like he's trying really hard to have the, I don't want to say it's swagger, uh, <laughs> trying really hard to have that kind of energy, but only a little bit. Only gets there partially. Nick needs his sauces to be as spicy as he is. That's right. You do like your food spicy. I do. And lemony and tangy. Uh, just eat these dinosaur chicken nuggets and shut up. <laughs> this is why we can't have kids. <laughs> like how your dad would make you sit and eat your food. Mm -hmm. I would be like, well, I would take the food, throw it away and be like, well, Try again tomorrow, then. You might be hungry enough tomorrow to eat. <laughs> um, uh, there isn't a Dairy Queen bias, and thank goodness, because Nick, if he sees a Dairy Queen, instantly he's like, oh, a cherry-dipped cone. I just want a cherry-dipped cone. <laughs> From my youth. Yes. So thankfully, I, we don't have one. Yeah, Thankfully, because I would stop and get one and... Oh, speaking of thrifty, someone said yes to the cotton candy ice cream, but also the bubble gum ice cream, which oh, yes. you've had. That's that's actually really good. When I was a kid, I loved that one. Yeah, ain't nothing wrong with liking some of that. Nick, what do you want for your birthday? Uh, I have everything I need. Hmm. Um, oh, Children of Paradise, Les Enfants du Paradis. That's an amazing, excellent, classic film. I, in fact, when we had first moved to LA, I think there was a restoration of that. Oh, I feel like he has to be Mediterranean adjacent because they like to season everything. I think he, you're very like white, white, like Scandinavian white. Scandinavian, yeah. My, I've never done that. Twenty three. His the skin tone you see here is not his natural skin color. <laughs> I I run. You outside. spend a lot of time in the sun. I run outside. It's not on purpose. Uh, but. My sister did the 23andMe, and there were some, uh, there was like 1% 1 1 Spanish something, but a lot of Prussian, a uh, lot of Scandinavian. I had a grandma that was 100% Finnish, so. That I don't know why you like food, like, over-seasoned. over -seasoned. You know my biggest, one of the, my biggest annoyances related to eating and food is people who season their food before they taste it. That shit drives me crazy. I think it is so ridiculous. And then you spend good money. Like, if you go to a nicer restaurant, like, why did you spend $50 on a piece of steak to then immediately dump sauce on it? Well, I'll try it. You first. don't think that this, like, chef in the back who's, like, been properly trained doesn't know how to make a tasty piece of meat? No. Mom, you do that. My mom does that. That, that shit drives me crazy. But that, the chef does not have my palate. Yeah, but you don't even know what the food tasted like. I usually taste it first. I you know. immediately grab. To have on standby. Judge not. <laughs> yes, Marlena is in witness for the prosecution. Excellent Billy Wilder film. Uh, she should have been nominated for an Oscar for that. She was only ever nominated once <laughs> for Morocco which I think is a, kind of a so-so von Sternberg film. Oh, you know, I think we might be on a podcast uh, in a couple of months uh, where we get to choose the movie. Uh, Gone with the Wind might be, you think that'd be an interesting choice? What's queer about that? Oh, sure. Someone said we should review Gone with the Wind. Fabulous. That'd be a fun movie to talk about with other people. Gone with the Wind, fabulous. Uh Yes, Transamerica with Felicity Huffman. I haven't watched that in years and years and years, though. Someone's like, Joseph just wants to try out prison and Scientology. They are the same thing. Yeah. Just for shits and giggles. <laughs> no, for respite. For I'm, I'm t I, I want to disconnect from life. I don't want to have to be responsible for anything. Can I just sit somewhere and like go get food three times a day and take a shower once and have my one hour of yard time and play like spades and... Yeah, watch TV. People get a lot of they get phones, drugs. I mean, I feel like I could be comfortable. I mean, I don't want the drugs, but 
I feel like I could be comfortable in there. You're saying you're adaptable. Yeah. Okay. Remember that. Uh, City of Lost Children. Yeah, that's uh, remember when Jean Pierre Genot and Mark Carroll made films. Oh, look at this. I'm in a film appreciation class in college with about 18 students, and we had an assignment where we had to list our favorite critic, and two people had you as theirs. Really? Wow. wow. That's interesting. <laughs> Somebody called Keith Morrison. Somebody called Keith Morrison. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I mention, so, you know, Dateline has changed up their season this year. The episodes are longer. And then after every episode, they have like a supplemental interview where like uh, Mankiewicz will interview uh, Morrison or, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I have to say, I don't think I like these people when they're not reading something. Keith Morrison, when he's just talking freeform, seems like a very stodgy guy who wouldn't be very nice. And Mankiewicz, I love his voice. Love, like love it. He's my favorite one. But him talking off script is, he doesn't seem as smart as he seems when he's doing the episode. That's like a lot of comedians though too, <laughs> when they're outside of their kind of- Oh, like Tom Papa and Fortune Feimster? Oh, I can't even stand listening to them. They just seem like, if you don't have a prepared thing to say, it's- there's no flow. But conversely, I think also proves that what they are doing is an art form. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Like they're very good at what they do. But it, it's so interesting to hear them um, like talk off script. Because I feel like I'm, I'm not used to stick. Like I have a hard time when I actually have to like try to read something. <laughs> um, I, do too. I can usually never read my writing. So half the time I don't even right. take notes. Joseph, can you rank Janet Jackson's throughout the years? Like, just Janet Jackson's? Like <laughs> or do you mean albums or? Eras. Eras? Oh, God. Well, Rhythm Nation's the best, for sure. Then Janet. Then Control. I really liked the uh, Black Eagle era. The Black Eagle. The Unbreakable era. Can I tell you about the Black Eagle? Or have you heard of the Black Have you heard of the Black have Eagle? You heard? No. And... Hi, guys. This month went by. Happy birthday to you. Yeah, this month did fly by. Yeah. I don't have the Criterion channel, but I do have Boomerang. <laughs> I don't know what Boomerang is, actually. I'm still okay. with Joseph. If I ever end up on Dateline, don't say that I lit up a room. No one would ever say that about me. No one would ever say that about me either. <laughs> I don't know. They'd say something similar. Similar. <laughs> they chopped the hair before they chopped the heads. They really did. The prologue. Thank you, Selena. Happy birthday, Nick. And thank you for sharing your knowledge and love of film with us. You and Joseph are a delight. And I look forward to your videos all the time. Thank you. That's very sweet. That's very sweet. I would love to see you guys review the 1982 version of Annie and Carol Burnett as Ms. Hannigan. Much superior to Cameron Diaz, that's for sure. You should put the Adams Family Where the Devil Roams on your list. One of the best horror films. Uh, movies I've seen in the last few years. The Adams Family, Where the Devil Roams? What is that? I don't, I have not seen that. I'm not sure about that. I'll have to look that up. Joseph never remembers Pregnant Barbie. He does, and I brought this up several many times and, and does not, doesn't want to. How come there were no shorter dad bodkins? I got a three piece suit for my 18th birthday, it no longer fits. <laughs> Well, Nick, you just want a suit because you never wear one, so you thought it might be cute to just have one to wear. Well, you do own a tuxedo, actually. I do, that I uh, that I bought for my first Cannes Film Festival over a decade ago. That, that you've never that worn. I've never worn. It still fits, though. You know what you should do? You should go out one night to like a random whatever and wear the tuxedo. And people be like... people, Or wear it. Or wear it. Or that'd be a good Thanksgiving... Uh, Thanksgiving. <laughs> Halloween costume. People in LA are so weird though, because uh, you and I, we went to a gay bar after I'd done some Oscar Q&A thing one year and I was wearing a, a button up that was tucked in and I got several comments from people like, what, did you just come here from work? I'm like, well, kind of, like, is that a problem? You don't want a man with a job? Like, like, why do I always mirror Joseph when he's self-soothing and pulling on his hoodie ties? I guess I'm stressed out right now. Is Nick stressing you out? <laughs> Doesn't take much. Uh, yeah, I'm always anxious. Uh, several many drinks. 
Has anyone seen Fallen Leaves? Love Fallen Leaves. Um, saw that out of Cannes. Uh, if you like Aki Korosmaki, I think he's in top form with that. But Actually, I'm still hoping Nick will drop his corn casserole. That's funny because we're going, for Thanksgiving, we're going to see my sister. And she texted you like she texted me over a week ago asking you for the recipe because she wants to buy all of the ingredients. She sent me a picture of the ingredients she has and so that you can make it when you get there. Yeah. But it's not that complicated. It's not like, um, a, like a dump cake. Basically. Well, maybe on Thanksgiving or well, no, we should probably do it before Thanksgiving. Maybe in the community tab, I'll post the recipe. Like in Parker Posey's memoir, she includes like her grandma's little recipes for stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Just so random. Is Diddy gay? I mean, I wouldn't mind. I've heard people say that, and I would believe it. I still remember the Shine Diddy fiasco. <laughs> I was listening to some Shine the other day, actually. Um, who, if people don't know, I think he sounds just like the notorious B.I.G. And Shine is currently like a, he's like a he's like a politician in like some Caribbean island. Oh, I didn't know. That. After getting out of prison, so he's. I hope he's doing well. Azalea Banks called Diddy one of hip men, of hip hop's many homosexuals. Azalea, who also doesn't like uh, what are those shoes? I can't stand. We have oh, what are those shoes called? Crocs. Crocs. Azalea doesn't like Crocs. <laughs> is Saltburn actually good or okay? Or should we wait for it? We reviewed Saltburn. It's okay. I gave it two and a half. And a half, but I said it was rotten on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> I mean, I stand by that. I, 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 I want to support this kind of storytelling, um, but I, I don't. I wish it. I just wish it had felt a little smarter. George Michael, cruising icon, rest in peace. He really was. He really was. Yeah, I do like my man Spicy as well, huh? Let's ask him. Uh, I don't know. Ooh, okay. I lost my place again. Let's see, that's what you get. What's your favorite? What's our favorite character trait of each other? <laughs> Probably. Uh, well, I don't know what defines it. Like, is saying like someone's intelligence, like their intellect, is that a character trait? Sure. Well, or maybe your perseverance. Actually, I would change it. Your perseverance. My perseverance. Which yes. is also what I hate about you. But the, but I would say that. Do you want to answer that question? Your integrity. My integrity. You're being funny. No, I'm not. It's a thing you have. I do have integrity. I believe. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. You. Place yourself in this moral high ground. And oh, see, <laughs> I'm kidding. That's the yeah, I do appreciate being um, steered in the right direction. Can we timestamp that, and I can play back to you when you complain that I'm judgy? Oh, I can still complain because you are overly judgy. Did George Michael die on Christmas? God, I don't remember. He created one of the most iconic Christmas songs, and then died on Christmas. Lash Christmas. That I'm, is a good Christmas song. The Boy in the Hair. No, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I hope to, though. That's coming out soon. The new Miyazaki. Oh, you like the Marvels. I don't think it's deserving of being bashed. I think I I just... I feel like if... Like, I didn't watch Captain Marvel, and I didn't watch that series with the girl who's Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel. So I really felt lost, and it felt like this movie... There should have been a movie in between. Like that 30 years she's floating down the universe. Why didn't we make a movie about that? Like also, I think Brie Larson was boring. And I did think Brie Larson was boring. Uh, the, I don't like any of these movies, but the that one Avengers movie is an infinity war where she her character is meeting Tom Holland as Spider-Man for the first time, and she's got kind of that lesbian bob, and she comes up. In, they're in space somewhere. She's like, hey, Peter Parker. Oh, I hate ew. It just made me cringe. Someone said go to a retirement home, not prison. Yeah, but I don't want to have to wait till I'm really old. Like, I could go now. <laughs> um, let's see. Oops. Okay. 
What does the best day look like to you, Nick? Uh, like Truffaut said, you, if you could read a book and watch two or three films a day or something like that. Also time to walk outside in some autumnal weather with maybe a light covering on and a coffee and something yummy to eat. Oh. What about you? Alone in a white room. My perfect day would be I get up early, like tidy up wherever I am, go get coffee, exercise, then just relax, like like go sit somewhere and have like a nice like late or like late breakfast, early lunch. Spend the day, like if I'm in a hotel, like watching TV and then go out for like a nice dinner and like a drink. That would be like a great day. And the weather's nice. Like I don't have to wear a jacket. It could be chilly, like brisk, but wear the tuxedo to the eagle. Yeah, which I'm sure would your comments, but people are friendly there usually. Did we review Thanksgiving? Yes. Do you yeah. think this was a good year for movies? Yeah, I mean, I feel like everybody, that's always something pondered every year, right? But to me, there's always, every year I have a hard time kind of condensing like a top 10 because there's there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of really great creative artists out there. And I mean, that that's personally from my favorite, what I think uh, are the best the year has to offer. But, you know, if you look at a lot of, people's year end lists. A lot of them have the same percentage or so of all the same titles, which also gets kind of boring, but I yeah, I think it was a good year. Someone wants to know if we've listened to the new Kylie Minogue album. No. No. <laughs> I want I forgot about it actually. But After I am a I am a Kylie Minogue fan and uh if anyone wants to verify that if you go to my playlist which I've linked uh, I have like five Kylie Minogue songs on there. So I am a fan. Um, I just, you know what? Because here's the problem. Padum Padum came out and it was a big hit. And I don't think they were prepared to release the album soon. So there was a long delay. Because immediately I looked for the album and I could see that, oh, it's not being released for a while. Didn't that kind of happen with Say Something as well? Yeah, so I don't like that because it's like now I'm excited for her new music, but then I have to wait a month or two months. And so then I just forgot. But funny enough, I was at a friend's house yesterday who loves Kylie Minogue and they have Kylie Minogue records like in the house as decoration. So I should listen to it, but I do like her a lot. I do too. Can you name some favorite Kylie Minogue songs? Say Something, uh, Locomotion. Say Something. All the lovers, all the lovers, slow. Yeah. Um, I really like uh, "Get Out of My Way," "Love Affair." What's the one about her breast cancer? About stopping the rain? That's kind of a B, oh. that's a B side, but I remember really liking that. Yeah. Um, oh, I believe in you. I yeah, believe. believe. In yeah. That <laughs> I live for Joseph's. Oh no! Yikes! Face. <laughs> I would have thought Velvet Rope era would be in your top three. Um, Together no. again. But for my age range, like I was already in college when that album came out. So like Control Rhythm Nation, Janet is like where I really fixated on her. Velvet Rope, I to be honest, that's not the album that I would... If I had to choose like five Janet albums to just have on like a road trip and that's the only music I can listen to, that would not be. Wow. It would be Control Rhythm Nation, Janet, Unbreakable. No to me to Joe? No, probably Discipline. Sure. Because I love feedback and rock with you. Yeah, feedback's great. But when I first met you and I told you my top two uh Janet songs like oh I don't really like either of those. Yeah, Nick's favorite Janet songs are just a little while and together again, mm -hmm. and those are not my favorites. Oh. <laughs> Although, um, there's a podcast called like Songs That Made the '90s, mm -hmm. something like that is the title, and one of his episodes is about together again. And after listening listening to him talk about it for an hour, I 
I, I think I was driving to Palm Springs and I played that song after the episode. So it was an hour long episode and then I stopped to use the bathroom and then I had another hour to get to Palm Springs. And I played together again on repeat for the one hour. And I had a new appreciation for it. So I do like that song much more than I used to. But just a little while, ain't no way. I I'm, love that song. Ain't no way I'm playing that song on my own. The music video is terrible, but I love that song. Yeah, I I would annoy my friends in college. They'd be like, turn that off. <laughs> um, someone says some of their favorite Isabel films are Eight Women, Amateur, and Coop de Coup de Torchon, Clean ha Slate. Have you seen them? Oh, yeah. I had Coup de Torchon. I just read uh, Jim Thompson's Population 1280 that it's based on because apparently Yorgos Lanthimos wants to remake it. But uh, yeah, she's great in that. And Joseph's never seen Eight Women. And we. Uh, I was like, who's Joseph? Oh, me. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> that's actually what I was going to have you watch tonight because we're going to be reviewing her new film that. She she did with Ozan, The Crime is Mine, which I just got a screener for. But You want your birthday movie to be eight women? Yeah. Is it good? It's great. It's fantastic. Is it fun? Yes. It's like a murder mystery musical starring- Oh, I, you actually showed me the trailer and I did recall, I do recall thinking it looked interesting. With Fanny Ardant and Catherine Deneuve. We have to get going. Um, I like Nick's analytical mind, grumpy face, and high standards. Mm -hmm. I like Joseph's sense of humor, a laugh, and the way he's able to explain complex stuff in a simple, succinct way. <laughs> Plus, my hair is amazing. Thank you. Yes, your your synopsizing skills are, are excellent. Well, um, oh, someone wanted to stop by and say uh, happy birthday, Nick. Thank you. Uh, but we should get going. We have some stuff to do before we go to actually we're having Nick's birthday dinner at a restaurant and uh <laughs> I'm acting like I'm Kylie Jenner and if I give my location people are going to show up <laughs> we're going to um Crossroads on Melrose mm -hmm. which you've been to before um a subscriber sent us a gift card to go there which was very sweet yes so thank you um but yeah we're going to go there for dinner so if anyone wants to uh, drop by a gift for Nick. Oh, wow. <laughs> we'll be at Crossroads at six. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> no one's going to show. Um, all right. Do you have anything else you'd like no, to say? No, thank you for all the birthday wishes. It's very sweet. Happy birthday, Nick. Bye.